Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dawn. I hope you have had a very Merry Christmas and got to see some family and friends perhaps. It has been busy around our house. My son who's in the army after a whole year not being able to come home, we got to see him for almost two weeks. So that was a wonderful time. My granddaughter was born. My oldest daughter was able to fly in from uh, Phoenix area. So it has been really busy around here, but we have been enjoying it a great deal. And of course now uh, you should be seeing this uh, uh, January 1st. So 2023 is starting. It's a new year. It's a time to plan. Uh, we get all of our different goals and things going. And so I thought this was a perfect time to do a video about planning for your garden for 2023. And that may seem a little strange being that it's the middle of January and if you're not in one of the really warm zones, um, you're maybe not even thinking about that or having that on your radar. But I'm going to challenge you to have um, some goals and some um, ideas of what you want to do and it, I think it will really, really help you. I know when we got back last year from uh, the country of Georgia, we got back the middle of March and we were not planning to be here at all. So we had no goals, we had no plans, and it was a very, very rushed year for us. And we didn't get our seeds going in time. Um, some of them grew, of course, and things, but uh, we did not get going nearly as quickly as we would like to. Um, and so this year I'm going to set out some really good goals and get things started ahead of time so that I know exactly what I need to be doing when, and I thought these might be helpful for you as well. So that is the first suggestion that I have is to get some goals for your garden, for your space, whatever that looks like, whether you have a big acreage that you plan to have a big garden on, or you have a very small space, or maybe even an apartment and you don't have any outside space at all. Um, just as an example, I wrote down some different goals that you might be uh, thinking of. Grow supplemental food for our family. Maybe that's something you want to do is okay, we're still going to go to the store. We don't have a big enough space that we can grow everything, but we can grow some things and we want to supplement as much as we can. Maybe some leafy greens and some other easy to grow things. Grow plants to attract pollinators. Depending on what you're doing, like I made a video on, on growing lemons and um, there's so many things that it will benefit you to have pollinators coming and going. Not to mention it's just wonderful to have the birds coming and the butterflies and the bees and, and all of that. So maybe you want to find out what kind of plants you might be able to grow that would attract the pollinators to your garden this year. Another one might be to challenge yourself, to learn to grow a difficult plant. Right now I have a zebra plant which for my level, it's been a little bit of a challenge. It's doing okay, but sometimes that's something nice to, to think about. Maybe this year you want to challenge yourself and see if you can do that. Or maybe you're like I used to be and you just want to get one plant that you can grow and not kill it off and not die. And that's your goal and that's what you want to do. And, and so that will be your 2023 focus. Or you could be the other end of that and you want to be as self-sufficient as possible. We certainly keep hearing a lot of things about 2023 that um, isn't all good news and it might be great if you want to try to get as self-sufficient as you can and grow as much of your own food as you possibly can. So all of those things are good goals and it's wonderful to put those down in front of you because it really starts shaping what it is you want to do. Now the second suggestion I would have is research. That is what I am doing over the winter. We're in zone five. My outside growing is really quiet right now. It's really cold and not a lot going on. I do have some growing inside, but right now I have a lot of books. I just got this one for Christmas. I have a lot of other ones. There's all kinds of books out there on urban gardening and backyard gardening and small space gardening. If you don't uh, have a local library close, you can even look at places like Thrift Books and Abe Books and things like that. They have a lot of good used ones. I have gotten those. Uh, I've got books on growing herbs. You can find out about medicinal herbs and if that's something you're comfortable with doing with your family, maybe to help supplement uh, if you can't get the medicine that you need sometime or it's just a, a healthy option for you. So that's something to look at. So 
definitely do your research as you're able to maybe take 15 minutes a day and, and read a book and you'd be surprised how quickly you get through it, even if you're busy. And then the uh, next step that I would suggest is be realistic with yourself on some type of budget for you, some type of how much do I want to spend. I have heard, sadly, um, some people will, you know, they're just excited and they want to get started and they'll end up spending thousands of dollars the first year they garden and then they get a really small harvest and it just discourages them and they, they just kind of stop. They don't even try anymore. And maybe if they had started out smaller and worked their way up and okay, I, I was able to make this one grow. And now I was able to make this one grow and, and I'm doing these three and I've got this berry plant over here and it's doing great. And we just harvested our own blueberries or, or whatever that will then give you the courage to go a little bit further and a little bit further. I have a video I can link below on growing herbs and you can even do that inside. I plan to have a big herb garden outside this year, but I'm already growing herbs inside. And uh, that's what this here is, which we're going to talk about in a moment, but this one isn't the one I'm growing. But you can have herbs inside all year round. You can have herbs outside. And that's a wonderful, fun thing for you and your family when you are cooking to be able to just go get your own and, and you have your fresh ones right there. And not to mention, it's so less expensive than going to the store. So that's um, something to think about. So you really want to decide how much do you want to give towards what you're going to be doing. And keep in mind when you're putting your budget together, you need to decide, and that'll also help with the research, you'll have a better idea of what you wanna do, how much you wanna invest in what. And what I mean by that is, like this here is um, just a simple thing you can get at your local home store, like Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, whatever you have, but it's, it's really great uh, for your knees in the garden if that's something that m might be helpful to you. Um, we mostly have raised beds here, so I don't have to use that much anymore, but when I'm using things on the ground, it really is helpful. So that's something you might need to get. This here, a pot, you need to, you're gonna have to get some type of pots. There are all kinds of them out there. So you can do your research on that, but you'll need some type of budget for pots and some type of um, containers, you know, for the water to put those in. When you're doing your different gardening, you're going to want some type of labels. Now, these, of course, are not very expensive at all, but it's something to put in your budget because it all adds up, all those little things. Uh, the supplements and, and the amendments to your soil and things like that, how far do you want to go with that? Do you want to be just, I just want to try it on my own. I just want to do it. Um, there's Back to Eden Gardening, which once you get started with that, you really don't need to add much, but that takes a little while. Um, I can add a link to um, that whole system. It's really interesting. And we have some of that going and it's actually um, starting to work for us. And we just got here a year. So that's really nice. But in the meantime, you're probably going to want to put a little fertilizers in, a little, uh, this here is worm tea concentrate. I've talked about that in another video. I can put a link for it in there. It is concentrate, so it lasts a long time. And it's helping my uh, lemon trees that are, they're just little plants now, but uh, this is actually one of them here. They had kind of slowed down, but after I started using the worm tea on them, they're really doing great. And then, of course, in the spring, I'll put them out and uh, let them get the sun and, and give them actual fertilizer. So... That here is the uh, another option that you might have to get is fertilizer. So all of these things are going to add to your budget. And you can make it as big of a budget or small a budget as you want. Like with the worm tea concentrate, maybe you don't want to buy that. Maybe you want to have some fun and do your own worm farm, which is not difficult. I have seen really big elaborate ones, which are wonderful. But uh, I found this one here because I have a small space. And it's just a little worm farm and it comes uh, with instructions tells you how to do it super easy it has two trays uh, with holes in it and it, you can make your own worm tea that way so that might be something to think about but all of those things would be what you want to add into your budget so then you have an idea and you're not overspending and you're not getting frustrated because oh I got to go buy soil and now that's eight dollars for this and I hadn't budgeted for that so all of this planning will help take away the stress and it will give you a really good overall picture of what your garden can look like and what your season can look like the next step that you'd want to think about is how do you want to, to garden 
there are seeds, you can do plants, you can do um, saplings, you can get pieces from other people. And depending on what you choose with that, that will also affect your budget. Like these here, I got these so you can just see them. So you can get actual plants. And um, depending on where you live, they probably don't have a lot of them available right now uh, at your home store, but they will in, uh, whenever your growing season starts. And I'll put a link down for uh, the growing seasons if you don't know what yours is, but it just basically is the time of your, your first frost, your last frost, how long you can grow, how many days you basically have uh, for growing, and all that's important. I'll talk about that in a moment. But um, the, these plants, these are available. Of course, they're going to be the easiest to grow because they're already there and you just basically put them in the, the ground or wherever you're going to put them and um, and they, they take off from there. Now seeds, um, you know, they have so many seed companies, so many good seeds out there. If you can do organic, I would suggest you do. Heirloom is wonderful. Then you, you get that consistent uh, harvest year after year. You know what you're going to get with those. But definitely if you're going with seeds, they have seed catalogs out now. I like old school things like hard catalogs, but of course they have them online too. And they're wonderful because as you click on the different plants or the different items that you've decided you want to grow, then it will tell you this grows best in these growing seasons and are in this uh, growing zones. And this is what you need, or this is full sun, or this is uh, partial sun. So all of that will help you. And then another thing you'll need to decide with that, as you're doing all this planning, as you're figuring all this out, where do I have sun in my garden? Or do I even have a garden? Do I need a partially, uh, a something that does partial shade? So up in your goals, you're deciding what do I want to grow and how do I want to grow it? But you also have to be realistic if you have only shade around and you don't have any sun anywhere and maybe you don't have much space in your house. Now um, this here, I can pull it down just a little bit. This is a growing light and see how they've got the different ones. And um, they have the red and the blue and the full and they even have timers on, which is so great because they'll come on in the morning, go off in the evening. You don't have to do anything with them and that can help you inside. But you have to be realistic if something needs, it just is an absolute sun loving plant and you don't have sun, well, you could challenge yourself and see if it would grow, but it may not be the best choice for you. Another piece of the whole um, deciding what you're going to grow and when is if you're going with the seeds, what do the seeds say? Now, almost all the seeds will have instructions on the back, but even before that, when you're looking in the seed catalogs or you're looking online, it will tell you as well, do you have to start them inside um, in a, a, some type of seed starting system or are they the type like root vegetables that really don't do well to be started inside and then replanted? Um, so that's something to think about. And even with your seed starting, now this one here is a little square one. So you see that's not too big. It has the type with the peat pots in it. So you can get those. And uh, with these, even though they are plastic, which some people aren't real fond of plastic, it's nice because you can get the refills of just the little um, the little cylinders. You don't have to keep buying the plastic over and over. You can keep that. And then um, if you have more space, you can always use these as well. They're longer. You can put more in there, obviously, and get more started depending on what you want to do. And that goes right back to those goal setting because it will help you so that you're not just all over the place and you've got this giant uh, thing of, of seeds growing and now you, you don't know what to do with them because you don't have space for them or you didn't plan out where you want to put them or oh these are not th these need full sun but I need one that needs partial shade and, and now you just kind of wasted time and wasted money and it can get frustrating so all of this will help you enjoy your garden season and all of it will give you an idea of you know what maybe I do want to try to grow that maybe I don't know I'll think about this and uh it, it'll just really add to the, the whole experience for you. Now, before I get to the uh, last suggestion and then even a bonus, I do want to share a couple of scriptures with you. I know that, uh, as I mentioned, Christmas has just been wonderful for us. And for so many people it is. Uh, but I know that for so many, many people it's not. Uh, my son, one of my sons works in emergency medicine. And the holidays, even though they are festive and wonderful, can also be 
very sad times and hard times for people. A lot of memories and a lot of things going on. And so I wanted to encourage you with a scripture in Psalm 34, uh, verse 18. Just a reminder, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. So if that is you today, I would encourage you to reach out to him, to just pray and ask him. And as I always say, I have links down below to learn more about the Lord and, and learn about Jesus and uh, even become a follower of him if you are not and find that peace that you can only find in him. And speaking of Jesus in the New Testament, there is scripture in Galatians chapter 6, uh, verse 9 and 10 that I felt was very good for our time with everything going on and all that just seems to keep coming at us and just boom, 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 one thing after another, after another. It's a very good reminder. Let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So, praise the Lord for his word. And I hope that that does bring you peace today. Now, the last part of the suggestions that I would give to you is once you've done this and you've got your goals and you've got your research done and you've done your budget and, and all of these things, is to write it down. To get some type of planner. Now, I found this last year. And this one uh, is way more than what we do. It is a whole farm planner. It's got um, thing. I like it because it's got winter, spring, uh, fall, and I'm sorry. It's got winter, spring, summer, and fall on it. So I thought that would be really helpful for us because we were just starting out and I didn't want to forget things or I was sure there were pieces I didn't know about. So that was very, very helpful for me. But it actually goes into the barn and what to do with your cattle and things like that. So I haven't used all of it, but it was so helpful for me because it has pieces about the garden and about composting and, and everything. So you can find one like that. You could just get your own you know, planner with, with paper, or of course, if you're like some of my kids, you can do it all on your phone. There are so many good planning apps out there. So whatever works best for you and your situation, but write that down and keep those things going. And then even as you are going, I would suggest when you go through your year, if there's something exciting that happens, you walk outside and it's been three weeks and you didn't think anything was happening at all. And now you've got three little plants growing. And you thought, oh my gosh, it's really growing. It's really happening. Write that down and put the date. And it'll be so fun at the end of the year. Um, you can see all of my stickies there. Um, we have chickens as well. Um, we're able to have six chickens here. No roosters, but six chickens even though we're in the town. So I have one that says the second, second chicken laid an egg today. Uh, doubling our production. So those kind of things can be really exciting to remember and think about. So I hope these will be helpful to you as you get started for the new year and it will encourage you to just stretch yourself and see what you can maybe do in 2023. And as a bonus, I will show you in a moment our little greenhouse and that might be something you want to consider. Maybe a greenhouse is not something you want to consider at all but I was able to find a small one that we can use on our property. So I'll just show you really quickly what that looks like. So if you're interested in that, interested in that stay tuned. Please do subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new videos. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you have an idea, I would love for you to leave a comment, something that you found that works well for you or something you're looking forward to, something you think you're going to grow this year. Please do leave a comment and share that and I'd love to read it. Thanks so much for stopping by. Bye bye. So this is my little greenhouse. Of course they have giant ones, but this one is one that I found that I can use right here on my deck. You see how it's not that wide or anything. It's not that tall. It's about seven feet, I think, total tall. And you can see I've got my things in there ready for the spring. But if you didn't have a lot of snow or you lived in a different zone, you could even be using this to extend your growing season even now. So that's 
just an option to be thinking about too. Is that something you want to invest in? Is maybe a little greenhouse or a big greenhouse? Or maybe that's just not, you don't have space for it. Or it's not something that you're really interested in for this year.